a lot of pundits, uh, a lot of experts, uh, a lot of reporters had actually suggested that uh, this was in effect going to be a referendum on the incumbent president, Barack Obama. But it seems to me that uh, when you look at uh, the recent developments, uh, Mitt Romney, who happens to be the challenger, seems to be, in fact, be facing that possibility. He seems to be defined as if it is actually a referendum on the challenger. What does he have to do in tonight's debate uh, in order for him to come back to his message, really, that he is the challenger and that uh, the country, in fact, needs change? Professor. It's very simple. All he has to do is turn the attention back to the economy. I don't believe that this economy is turned around at all. All we have to do is look at the figures. In two days from now, the job report is going to come out again. And giving consumer unenthusiasm, because I couldn't say consumer confidence, this on confidence, we are going to expect the job numbers to be bad again. So these are all, that's why I said, that's why I call this election the mother of all elections. <clears throat> it is so fluid, it is changing very rapidly. That's why the only poll I look at right now is the Rasmussen poll, only because Rasmussen is a daily uh, rolling tracking. poll, tracking poll. So people are changing their minds so constantly. One day Romney is up by one point, the other day uh, uh, Obama is up by two points, today is up by two points, yesterday was up only by one point. Again, that tells you that people are not really, many people are not really very settled. And the fact that, as I said, we talk about 41 million rascals that are now playing games with what they, they consider as a liberal media that has been too soft on Obama and instead attacking Romney. So they now see their fight, not only against Obama, but also the liberal media, as they call it. And of course, uh, 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 they want to make sure they look stupid by the time the election uh, is over. I am, of course, a very bona fide and a cat carrying uh, Democrat. Um, but I personally am disappointed in Obama. Why? Because he has marginalized my African people, African American people in the United States, and have done very terrible things in Africa that many of us were not expecting him to do. Again, we had that conversation here even right after the election. I predicted that Johnny Carson was the wrong person to be Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs because his thinking was, was not aligned with where the Afri Africa should be heading. And that debate was uh, foregone because they say he has the experiences, the man that has been a bachelor, the man that has been the State Department, as opposed to the great lady that should have, would have made a difference. So we have to be honest to say that Obama's policy towards Africa has been terrible. That's why the majority of African leaders are not warm about Obama's chances of free election. Of course, the, po the populace, the masses, are, very, are still very enthusiastic about Obama, but they are not going to vote. In fairness <laughs> to um, your analysis, Professor, uh, talking about uh, how President Obama has marginalized Africans in the United States, um, what about the fact that uh, a president of the United States, the occupant of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, the White House, yes. is the president of all Americans. That is wonderful. He's the president of all Americans. He's not even the president of Africa. He should even do anything for Africa. If that is the case, if that the case people are making, they should stay the hell out of Africa too. He has no business going to join Sarkozy and Cameron and uh, encouraging those butchers in Libya to butcher African migrants that were in, in, in Libya and the, the Storegs and the Hamaziks in Libya. The so-called people we supported in Libya are the ones that turned around and killed our own ambassador in Libya and our own people. Mm -hmm. So this was a complete miscalculation because again, there is this tendency in this White House that they know so much, they know everything that mm -hmm. their, their, their vision and what they know is so correct that they don't even listen to other perspectives. And that is a very, very dangerous strategy any administration to follow. I am still a Democrat. I may end up voting for, for all my other Democratic candidates, but I'm going to have a very serious thought of whether or not I'm going to, not that my vote matters in Washington DC anyway. Any Democrat that runs in Washington DC is 
is, he, is going to win by a landslide, whatever that is. But again, it we is, have yeah. to be very honest it is that, that, that is a president of all Americans. There's no question about that. But we also have to be honest that our, our Jewish brothers and sisters have done very well in getting Obama to do whatever they thought is their agenda for Israel. Yes. We also have to be honest that the GLBT, the Gay Lesbian Community, have been able to get their own agenda. The Latinos have been able to get their own agenda. So why should we, African Americans, Africans in America, be the one that should accept be told that we now have to live in post-racial America is, and not other groups, I have a problem with that. This is very interesting, uh, Ambassador Cohen, especially given that uh, you happen to be, I think, a Republican. Right, right. Uh, w what do you say to his analysis of Obama? Well, uh, I, Especially when he talks about uh, how, what he calls the liberal media uh, being so kind of easier on Obama. Is that what you say? No, I don't think so. I, I, I watch Fox News, which is my Republican channel, and they're very tough on Obama, and uh, a lot of others are very tough on Obama. Uh, but on Africa, I really disagree uh, with my colleague because Obama has continued the very good programs of the Republicans. He's continued the Millennium Challenge program. Mm -hmm. He's continued the PEPFAR, uh, PEPFAR yeah. which are wonderful programs of President Bush. He has also instituted a new program, which I think is a, extremely essential, which is called Feed the Future. He understands more than anyone that agriculture is extremely important. And if you don't fix agriculture in Africa, Africa will not develop. And I think that this is a great decision, plus the fact that he's pursued a very aggressive peacemaking policy in the Sudan, which, which is a great problem. Mm -hmm. uh, Johnny Carson is one of the best assistant secretaries I've ever seen, including better than me. And he has uh, done a wonderful job in West Africa, for example, the Guinea crisis. Mm -hmm. he, he came into the Guinea crisis and put it on the right track. It was really going into real difficulty. So I give uh, Obama a thumbs up for his policy in Africa. Now, as far as domestic policy is concerned, I think he has been blocked by the Republican House of Representatives. As a Republican, I don't agree with these Tea Party people. I think they're extremists, mm -hmm. and uh, I think they've been blocking everything that he wanted to do. So we can't blame him for the lack of progress in, uh, in helping various minority groups like African Americans.